Okay, we've looked at a lot of different camping stoves on the channel here before. Today's video, we're going to take a look at what may be one of the most uh, unique stoves we've ever looked at. Stay tuned, that's coming up here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose. My name is Brian. Thanks for joining me. So the folks at GearBest were kind enough to send me one of these free soldier stainless steel camping stoves so I can show it to you. And you know, we've looked at some other stainless steel stoves that are kind of like got the panels you put together in their wood stoves basically or whatever kind of biofuel you want to put in them. And they all are really pretty much the same. There's several different designs, but, but basically you got stainless steel panels that, that, that snap together, slot together, however, to create a little firebox, basically a stove. Well, the, the Free Soldier stove, that's what it is, but it's also, um, it's got some other features. We'll just say that. And let me, let me just say right up front, before we get into that, when I saw this stove um, and they asked me if I want to take a look at it, First I said sure, and then I, and I started looking at the details, and I thought, you know, I really don't know. But I got it, I thought, okay, why don't we go ahead and at least give it the full survival on purpose review, testing, and evaluation, and we'll just, instead of me just having a preconceived idea, we'll just see how it all pans out. You can decide for yourself whether this stove would be for you or not. So without any more rambling, any more setup, let's just take you down to the old stump top and get to doing some of that, uh, I guess it's stove stuff. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. Okay, so here is the Free Soldier stove in the uh, pouch it comes in. And we'll just start with the pouch and move this out of the way. So first of all, I have to say it's a pretty nice pouch. It's a um, Cordura style nylon. It's got some um, like snap attachments on back that you can run on your belt. It's got some webbing here. You could run, you know, different mully attachment stuff through and all that. So you just got a couple of different ways you can attach this. And then it's got pretty good stiff velcro through here and it's sewn pretty well too so there there's that and everything seems to be pretty well made so it's a decent little pouch um, it does not have any kind of a separate bag like a cotton bag so when you get this thing black and dirty it's going to get the inside of your pouch black and dirty i'm pretty sure but that's okay it's a stove right so we'll set the pouch out of the way now now here's where it gets a little a little creative we'll say okay so first of all we got some hex wrenches here and there are four on each of these two panels. They, they appear to be exactly the same size, so I guess you can put one on each side of another bolt. If you need to work on your car or whatever, um, it could come in handy. It has a rope cutter or, or, or I guess a line cutter here. It has a bottle opener here. Um, this other one has a little can opener on it that you can use like a, um, kind of like a you know standard can opener. It'll be on a Swiss Army knife or something. Uh, we've got some notches here not sure what those are for it looks sort of like a tile trowel but it's got these things in the way so maybe i don't know fish scale i don't know um, we have a one blade has a serrated blade here on this one and then just some very fine notches here so maybe that would be just for roughing something up but and that's that's really a pretty sharp serrated blade there if you can see that so you know that, that could come in handy then we have um some more square notches on this one not really sure what they're for and finally, last but not least, we have a very sharp little edge right here. Not, it's, well, okay, not very sharp, but sharp enough to cut your hand if you try to grab it. And then we have a ruler on this side. And, and then what I consider pretty much the icing on the cake, we have a cheese grater. So instead of me, you know, just giving you my right off the cuff opinion of all this stuff, let's take a look and see how well it actually functions. So first of all, uh, I want to take a look at the saw. So here's the saw here. Now, I'm going to take a piece of reasonably soft wood here. This is poplar, pretty soft. Um, got pretty much two choices to when you use the saw. If you want to push cut, then you have to hold it from the, the ruler side, and unless you know whichever hand you are, and then watch, don't grate your fingers on this. And we'll try that. So, and, and honestly, it's, it's, this is pretty soft wood here. So, I'm going back up where you can see, it'd be helpful, wouldn't it? So, it's, it, it, but it's actually went through it pretty good. Let's try this bigger piece here and see what happens. So, <laughs> so reasonably soft wood. You can see I've got a pretty good notch in there. Um, got to watch it though because you will grate your fingers. I'm going to take a piece of harder wood here now. This is, I think, privet, which is pretty tough stuff. You see how well it installs there. 
it's just really hard to get a grip on it okay really hard to get a grip because you're just kind of holding this flat piece of metal and um but you know it cuts a little nice nothing fantastic okay next we got the blade here and again it's not super sharp it's kind of a chisel grind too it's, it's flat it's, it's only beveled on one side but let's um I thought we'd just do a standard test with this. So the very first thing I want to do is, you know, if we got a piece of poplar and maybe it's wet on the outside, we need to get it down to some dry wood, right? So let's just try that. We'll, uh, we'll, do, we'll go from there. How about that? We'll just... Uh-oh. Well, the, uh, the old cheese grater gets in the way there. Let's move it on down a little bit like so. Let's see what we can do with it. I can tell you that when the uh, when the uh, camera was off and I was I was I was doing a smaller piece of wood, it actually worked really well. I was surprised. So, but we'll, we'll just keep going with it. Okay, so we got there. The next step in the process then would be, you know, if you're trying to build a fire, you, you need some some tinder. So, we'll go ahead and um, see if we can carve some feathers with this thing. Now, being it is a chisel grind, we're going to turn it over a little bit and see what we can do with some feathers. not the greatest in the world chisel grinds really and it's not super sharp either so no it's not going to be the greatest feathers in the world and try to turn it around and that's where you know it really doesn't you almost have to hold it flat it just doesn't work very good turn around so that chisel grind really eats into it so you got to turn, turn it backwards and just be patient now here's something i tried and um i gotta be honest with you oh uh i got blood again when I first saw this little grater, you know, I really thought it was kind of cheesy, but here's something I was able to figure out on the last little go around here. It's, uh, we set it up there. We've got some of my favorite little old fat wood, and we'll just keep that right there with it. And look at here. Would you look at that? That is beautiful. So we got that there. Um, <clears throat> so the next thing you're going to need to do, obviously, is um, the next standard test we do on every blade, and that is a blade, is you know the ability to strike a ferro rod. So let's just see what happens here. Let me try that. And looky there. Move our feathers over there. And pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool indeed. So um, there you go. There's that. Now, the uh, next thing I want to check is, oh, oh also, we, we didn't check the chopping. Okay, we always check chopping on every blade. So we got to make sure we check the chopping here. So you got to just kind of. Really not much of a way to get a really good grip on it so and honestly those saw teeth they kind of hurt so we'll turn around a little bit but still that chisel edge is just not made for chopping so not very good on chopping so next we'll take a look at the uh the uh, serrated edge here and see how well it does now the one thing about the serrated edge you can grab it you got it you got a way to grab it here and you got that oh, it kind of hurts there or you can grab it here and then you got this kind of a corrugated thing here notch thing that kind of hurts too but we'll, we'll hold that it hurts it hurts less so let's see what we can do with the serrations okay so it cuts but oh but it also hurts my hand if you can see that so okay so next <clears throat> what i thought we'd do is just go ahead and get this thing hot um man i've tore my hands all the pieces on this thing look at that Golly, that hurts too, man. That's a nice little slice right there. Look at that. Would you? Can you? Can you see that, man? That is. That's not. That's not happy time. Okay, so <clears throat> let's put this thing together and see if we can get a fire going in it. Something I, I don't really like is is I think that maybe the slots could be reversed or something. It would probably work a little better and stay together better. I don't know for sure, but that's that's what it seems like to me. All right, we'll get this together. We'll get the uh, last one in. 
and it's just a little bit of a pain in the neck. But not bad. Okay, so there it is. Up, oh, just came out. So yeah, I think it's you got to pick it up by the by the hexagon size. That's 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 the trick. So throw some pine cones in there. That'd be good. We want to get it getting hot for a minute here, and just to see how well it uh it might uh handle the heat, so to speak. Carve me off a little bit of that there fat wood. Okay, then we'll put this little fat wood right here, top of this little pine cone. Then we'll take our little ferro rod and we'll uh get her burning. Took me a second, but there we go. Let's let it burn and get hot and we'll see what happens. So we got a pretty good fire going in it right now, and as you can see, it's drafting up pretty good. So it is pulling air from the bottom underneath here, and through these, uh, I think through these hexagon holes also. So um, it's doing a pretty good job of drafting up. Don't really have anything to cook, but that's not the point here. I mean, obviously you got you got heat. It's gonna it's gonna cook, and it's definitely got um, a good bit of um, updraft going. So the heat's being contained in here pretty well. You know, this big opening, it's gonna cause you to lose some heat, but it also makes it a lot easier to feed. Uh, your sticks through once you get your fire going, but you can see it's definitely got a good fire going We're gonna let it burn down and we'll take a look at it and we'll do that final test that I always do on all the blades Okay, we're going mobile for just a minute to take a look at the stove and you can see from the top view You know the pine cones are still kind of embers down there, but it looks like it's got a little bit of warping here the uh, ch The cheese grater Or fatwood graters. I may be calling it Looks like it held up okay. It's a little thinner. I was concerned about that, but uh, what I'm going to do now is just dump this pine cones out uh, because they're going to burn for a while. Let this thing cool off, and then we'll uh, wrap this thing up. Okay, so here we are after the fire, and I got to tell you, um, it's cooled off enough to hold. It really, it's got a little warpage, as you can see from the way they're laying there. Like this one's a little, little warped, a little bent there, but nothing major. All the stainless steel stoves I've ever tried do that. A little bit of warpage here. Um, one thing I will say is the cheese grater, I was thinking it might warp out. It really didn't do too badly. So, And this being the blade, I think it's important to test every blade completely and thoroughly. That's one of the reasons I have such a high-tech, state-of-the-art testing facility. So, yeah. Chuck Norris got pulled over for speeding, but he let the officer go with a warning. <laughs> okay, well that was a somewhat different look at a somewhat different stove. So like I said at the beginning, when I saw the stove, you know, I thought, I mean, I thought it was actually a little ridiculous to be honest with you, but I decided, hey, at least let's give it a shot. Let's have some fun. It test the, uh, the features for what they're worth. And I got to tell you, I was kind of surprised by the by some of the things that I was able to do with this little stove. One of the things that I was able to do that I didn't really wasn't really happy about was I chewed my hands up pretty good. So honestly, from a practical standpoint, and you know, I'll let you decide for yourself. I, I would much rather have a knife, I'll put it that way, than all this other stuff. From a stove standpoint, it works pretty good. I mean, it's in the 20, 20 to 25 dollars range, somewhere in that ballpark, give or take a couple of bucks. So it's not a bad price just for the stove to be honest with you and it works just fine for a wood stove and it does have those extra features so if you you know if you were in a really really serious bind and for some reason you lost your knife but you didn't lose your stove <laughs> you know it could come in handy so i'll leave it at that i will put a link to this stove in the description below if you're interested you can go check out the the folks at gear best um, i think the, again it's like in the 25 dollars range plus including shipping and the folks at gear best have also got just a wide huge gigantic selection of stuff at some pretty good prices so you know, while you're there you can look around and see if there's anything else that strikes your fancy so i'll put a link below um once again thanks to the folks at gear best for sending me this so i can show it to you and as always, thank you for watching Survival on Purpose. Thanks for subscribing, for clicking that thumbs up, and for sharing this video with all your friends. And thank you so much for supporting the channel by doing all your Amazon shopping through the Survival on Purpose links. I really appreciate the support. Once again, my name's Brian. You're watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival is not an accident, so be prepared. I'll see you next time. By the way, 
I did this video yesterday and my hands are still hurting. All the instructions here, by the way, trying to describe what these are, unfortunately for me, are in China, Chinese. But my fat wood has gone out and that ain't good. So if you're wanting to grate some cheese while you're camping, you got the ability to do that. <laughs> yep, doofus factor is strong in this video. <laughs> okay, one more try. <laughs> it's really not as hard as I'm making it look like, I'm, I promise you. So, oh yeah, she's cutting like butter, baby. Like butter. <laughs> you know I love me some fat wood. Oh yeah, would you look at that? Would you just look at that? 